Hello, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us here today at the Penobscot Marine Museum. Please put your questions and comments below. We love hearing from you. William Pierce Stubbs was born in Bucksport in 1842. William's father was a sea captain and farmer and sometimes took his wife and children with him on sea voyages. When William was eight, his parents took his younger brother with them out to sea, and William was left home with a neighbor. At age 17, he was working as a farmhand, but by his 20s, he owned his father's schooner and had joined the American Shipmasters Association. In 1870, he was 28. He was listed as a master mariner in the Orrington census. And this is a tinted photo of South Orrington from a postcard showing the Penobscot River uh, flowing through the beautiful landscape. In 1868, William had married Letitia Hoban and their daughter Maud was born a year later. In 1875, Letitia and little Maud moved to Marblehead and William moved to East Boston in a separation. A year later, he was sharing a studio in Pemberton Square with another marine painter from Maine and was listed in a Boston directory as a painter. Having been a schooner captain, William probably had plenty of contacts and likely got along well with sea captains seeking portraits of their coastal and fishing schooners. Having a shared culture with the schooner captains and now living near busy Boston Harbor, Stubbs began a steady business. Here is the Augusta E. Herrick, which Stubbs painted for Captain William T. Herrick. I could not figure out where this painting is. There's clearly two very clear landmarks this uh, stone structure over here and this lighthouse. If anybody recognizes that, let me know. I'm really curious where this is. Captain Herrick was from Swans Island, which is on the east side of Penobscot Bay. And it made me wonder if the lighthouse was the lighthouse on Swans Island, which also has a building with a red roof like this. But the lighthouse is a little bit different. On Swans Island, it's very square. This one looks a little more round. The Augusta E. Herrick was built in Gloucester by Daniel Poland, a designer of extra fast schooners called Extreme Clippers. Speed had distinct advantages for two of the commodities that Herrick shipped, mackerel and fresh fruit. I bet you can guess why speed would be handy in bringing in fresh mackerel. Eric sold the schooner in 1891 and retired to run a hotel back on Swans Island. This is the Shannon in a storm, as you can see. The Shannon is a half brig, with two masts, one with square sails and the other with fore and aft sails or sails like you would find on a schooner. This reefed sail was probably one of those triangular sails. And you can see that the crew have reefed or furled several of the sails to reduce some of the force from that stormy wind. The ship is loaded with lumber from Halifax and is headed to Suriname. The details are amazing on this, the wind whipping the foam off of the tops of the waves, uh, the men running on deck. Uh, imagine this steep slope wet with rainwater and trying to get around on it. The sky too, I think is just really nicely done. It, it has so much movement, you feel like the clouds are whipping by in that stormy wind. The Shannon was built in 1867 in Millbridge, that's well east of where we are here in Penobscot Bay. When the vessel was first built, the captain was Frank Sawyer, 
and one third of the ship was owned by four other members of the Sawyer family, which I found the ownership of this really interesting. Of course, another owner was a guy from Boston and another from New York. It's very common for lots of different people to have small ownership in many different ships. Ships were owned by lots of people to diversify and protect the investors from the high risk of loss that you have with a ship and so easily be lost at sea or run aground. But interestingly, families seem to have invested together. There were three Strouts on the list for the Shannon and two Rays as well as all of the Sawyer family. Most of the owners were men, but Carlotta Wallace is listed as well. The last extant document for the Shannon is a registration from Callis in September of 1891. This document was turned in at Key West, Florida, after the Shannon was lost at sea. The donor of this painting says her mom sailed on the ship when her mom was a child, and her mom's father was the captain, Robert Crossgrove. And that was at the time that this painting was made. I'm very curious what the child thought of being in a storm at sea like this. I would be frightened if it were me. Thanks again so much for joining us today at Penobscot Marine Museum. Please put your questions and comments below. This is a painting of the Stubbs Homestead in Bucksport. We don't have a lot of paintings of a family home like this, and I love this resource. Look at the elm, so much taller than the house with that distinctive elm shape. We don't see a lot of those these days after Dutch elm disease killed so many of the trees. Letitia died in 1880. Two years after Letitia died, Stubbs married Mary Ada Howe and they moved to Charleston. Stubbs got a new studio near the Boston waterfront on Commercial Street. Another daughter, Mabel, was born in 1885 but her mom, Mary, died when she was just two years old. Mabel was sent to friends back in South Orrington. I haven't been able to find out where poor little Maud was sent when her mom died. Maud herself died at age 21. William seems to have suffered from depression after this and sought out mediums in order to contact the spirits of his lost family. My favorite part of this painting, aside from the sort of welcoming smoke coming out of the chimney, is the little family gathering in the front here. We've got some ladies with their shawls on and their long skirts, a gentleman with his hat, and then a couple of young girls with two pets. We don't know when this painting was made. I wish I knew. I, I wonder, you know, is this touching little family scene? Is it from a family photo uh, back in William's youth? Or is it an imagination of what might have been? Here is the four-masted schooner, Blanche C. Pendleton. I bet some of you recognize these two lighthouses. William Stubbs was definitely an artist. We could see it from that beautiful painting of uh, Shannon in the storm, but he was a craftsman. He was painting to feed his family. And one of the techniques he used was using a little bit of a wider brush than some other marine painters use. And you can see that in these kind of painterly quick strokes in the sea. And yet he still keeps that precision, making sure the ship is presented just so with every little detail, all of the lines and all of the sails. And I enjoy these colorful flags, all of the people on board. So I find that interesting that he's, he's finding a balance between getting these paintings out and, and earning his pay, but also making really beautiful, accurate paintings. So did you happen to remember where these two lighthouses are? 
Yes, that is Thatcher Island. You can see this island from Rockport, Massachusetts. Thatcher Island has a pretty interesting story. Way back in 1635, Ennis caught in a storm was smashed on the rocks of this island. The only two survivors, Anthony and Elizabeth Thatcher, and they were given the island in compensation. Here are some little excerpts straight from the story as written by Anthony Thatcher himself. He writes, I must turn my drowned pen and shaking hand to indict the story of such sad news. We embarked at Ipswich, 1635, with our families and substance bound for Marblehead. But before light, it pleased the Lord to send so mighty a storm, so furious, our sailors knew not what to do, but we were driven before the wind and waves. The waves came furiously and violently over us and against us. By a mighty wave, I was with a piece of the bark washed out upon part of the rock where the waves left me almost drowned. My wife crept up into the scuttle of the quarter deck. Another wave, dashing the pinnace all to pieces, carried my wife away in the scuttle as she was with the greater part of the quarter deck unto the shore. All the rest that were in the bark were drowned in the merciless seas. We were by that merciless wave, washed off the rock. As I was sliding off the rock into the sea, the Lord directed my toes into a joint in the rock side, as also the tops of some of my fingers with my right hand, by means whereof the wave leaving me, I remained so hanging on the rock. Another wave coming over the top of the rock, I was washed away from the rock and by the violence of the wave was driven hither and thither in the sea and had many dashes against the rocks, but was thrown down on my hands with the waves and so with safety crept to the dry shore where blessing God, I turned about to look for my children and friends, but saw neither nor any part of the pinnace. I saw my wife getting herself forth from amongst the timbers of the broken bark. We went up into the land and sat us down under a cedar tree, which the wind had thrown down. Now, came to my remembrance when I last saw my children. One was severed from me sitting on the rock at my feet, the other three in the pinnace, my little babe sitting in his sister Edith's arms, who to the utmost of her power sheltered him from the waters their very countenances calling unto me to help them, whom I could not go unto, neither could they come at me, neither would the merciless waves afford me the space or time to use any means at all, either to help them or myself. With the spoiling and loss of all our goods and provisions, myself, cast upon an unknown land in a wilderness, I know not where. I and my wife were almost naked, both of us, and wet and cold, even unto death. I found a knapsack cast upon the shore in which I had a steel and flint and powder horn. Going further, I found a drowned goat. I struck fire, and so dried and warmed our wet bodies, then skinned the goat, 
and we boiled some of her. Our drink was brackish water. That desolate island, which I named Thatcher's Woe. After many more shipwrecks on that same island, uh, the first two lighthouses were built in 1771. In 1861, these two granite replacements were built, the ones you see in this painting. They raised the light considerably higher so that they could be seen from farther off. In 1889, Americans witnessing the decline of their merchant marine put together an international maritime exhibition in Mechanics Hall on Huntington Ave in Boston that was later torn down to build the Prudential Center. In addition to the latest maritime products like navigational equipment, there was an art exhibit, eight paintings of William Pierce Stubbs stood alongside works by Fitz Henry Lane, Winslow Homer, and others. We will be showing another painting made by William Pierce Stubbs on November 27th. That presentation will talk about some new discoveries in Penobscot Bay history. Next week, we will have a sequel to one of our more popular topics, Instead of women at sea, we will be talking about women on land, the ones who were left at home kept things going. Thank you for being with me here today. Thank you to our members and donors. This programming has been brought to you in part by the National Endowment for the Humanities, exploring the human endeavor. Thank you again and take care.